It was all working great, but then... I want to take a photo. A family vacation was coming up, and I couldn't believe how much I was stressing about how to take videos and photos for the trip. If I bring the big camera, will I use it as much as I think? Or will I use it at all? Should I just iPhone it all the way? It's going to be with me at all times. But as a photographer, I want to capture the best images and the best memories. So this was the dilemma. How much gear do I bring and will I use it? The answer? Well, it wasn't as straightforward as I thought it would be. I'm Raphael and welcome to the channel where our goal is to always fix it in camera and then finesse it in post. And deciding which gear to bring on vacation was more stressful than I could have imagined. It did surprise me how different a vacation trip is from a business trip. For a business trip, it's easy. Bring the best gear you can fit on the carry-on. You know the general purpose of the trip and you can choose a gear which best suits that trip. But then our family vacation had me super indecisive on what I should bring because there were so many different possibilities on what we could capture. I have three potential cameras that I could bring. The first one is easy, an iPhone. It's simple, it's compact, and will always be with me. Easy startup, easy switch between photo and video, works great in daylight and sunny settings. It doesn't capture the best photos or videos from the cameras that I have, but it'll capture the memory. So it's a no-brainer, yes, it's coming. And it doesn't even need to go in the carry-on, it's just in my pocket. Next up was the Canon EOS R. It's a few years old, but has a great sensor for photos. It only has HD video compared to the 4K on the iPhone, but it has a great feature that I love. There's quick switching between photos and videos just by pushing one button. I have many lenses for it, and I'm very comfortable and familiar using it. But it's really bad in low light for video, just like the iPhone. And I knew we would be going on rides that would be super low light and we would be doing stuff at night that I'd like to capture as well. This is where the Sony FX3 comes in. It's fantastic in low light, but it can also take amazing photos and videos in daylight. It's 4K with amazing slow-mo. But ultimately I ruled out the FX3 fairly quickly and I'll explain why a little later. The FX3 would be the camera that I would bring with me for a business trip, hands down, easy choice. Grab the camera backpack, or more likely in my case, the rolling carry-on Pelican case, a messenger bag, and leave most of the gear at the hotel and travel light during the day with the messenger bag. But we're on vacation, a family vacation. So how is that different, you ask? I am traveling with kids, not super young kids, but young enough, where we still need to bring a change of clothes and drinks and other things that I know we'll have to carry. And a camera backpack isn't the best choice for this kind of trip. The way it has its compartments actually make it harder to carry other things like purchases along the way. And I didn't want to get to a point where I was strapping all the extra stuff to the backpack like a Sherpa, though that did happen. So the camera backpack was out. I wanted to take a hiking backpack. It made way more sense for the amount of walking I knew we were going to be doing, but I still needed a place to put all my camera gear that I knew I was going to bring. On Amazon, I found this small camera bag. It's water resistant and it fits nicely in the bottom of a backpack. At the time that I ordered it, they didn't have a black one, but it was super cheap. And I wanted to make sure that it actually did work. It's fairly small, just enough to fit the camera, two lenses and all the accessories that I wanted to bring, but it severely limits how much I can actually take. So now I have to be very selective. So what stays and what goes? This is what I packed with me. The EOS R, the 16 to 35 millimeter for all the wide angles or vlogging if I did any. And then it was a choice between the 50 millimeter, the 24 to 70 or the 135 that I have. Ultimately, I decided that the long lens would be best. Though if I still had the RF 70 to 200 millimeter, I would have taken them. And I packed an ND filter. That was my family vacation travel kit. But then it was time to use the gear. At first I knew getting to the airport would be hectic. So I packed the camera and used the iPhone exclusively for that portion of the trip, just to document. Document versus create. I agree, Gary V. And it just made sense, kids, luggage, moving quickly, you don't want to forget anything, or I didn't want to have something dangling off my side and a camera strap. For me, the camera was more for the vacation. So let's get there first. First day, the camera set up, bag is ready to go, clip on the bag for a quick access. I was excited for this. I think I filmed with the camera for about 20 minutes before I started using the iPhone more and more. The wide angle was nearly the same and it was so much quicker to fire up and just use. And I didn't want to literally have the camera strapped to my hand for the entire trip. Any ride that we went on, I found myself putting the camera fully away into the backpack. I didn't want it smashing side to side on the ride. After two rides, I didn't feel like taking the camera out anymore. So I was using the iPhone to take photos and videos from that point. And to be honest, it felt like this was going to be the way it is for the rest of the trip. But then I wanted to take some detailed photos 
and videos, and the iPhone just pooped the bed here. It's great for wide angle stuff and for macros, but anything off in the distance, it can't really do with any kind of fidelity. The digital zoom just makes everything look like mush when you review it later. And as good as the iPhone has become taking pictures and videos and the photos still look like iPhone photos, but photos with actual lenses just hit different especially long lenses. These are not shots I feel confident getting with an iPhone. For me, I feel that the iPhone is only halfway there as an all around camera system. It's really meant to document, not create. But as a photographer, I want to create sometimes. The OSR, as small as it is, does feel too cumbersome to use to just document when stuff is happening so fast. And when you're with your family trying to enjoy the moments, there are no resets or wait for the camera to be ready. So in the end, I use the iPhone and the EOS R together to capture, document, and create. The iPhone for footage and quick snaps, and the EOS R with the telephoto lens to capture some really nice photos that the iPhone could not get. Though I do have to get my hands back on the 70 to 200 millimeter for next time. The biggest reasons I didn't bring the FX3 is it's super expensive, which made me very nervous. I only have one native lens and I didn't want to rent any like I would on a business trip. The Metabone adapters are hit or miss with the EF lenses. And one of the bigger reasons that made me glad I didn't bring the FX3 is that it doesn't have an EVF for those moments in harsh and bright lighting conditions. So check out this video about how annoying that actually was. I didn't think it would frustrate me as much as it did. Also, I live stream on my second channel where I deep dive on the creative process as well as freelance financials. So make sure you check that out. As always, thanks for watching.